as you say in this country, give it your best shot. I have nothing to fear from you. In this dramatic excerpt from the play Denial by Peter Segal, a Holocaust denier who has been accused of inciting hate crimes confronts the saintly author of a book about life and death in the concentration camps. Let's jump right in. In your book, Gehenna, on or about page 85 of the Ballantine paperback, you describe an Allied bombing raid on the Buna rubber plant at Auschwitz I, yes? You read my books? Oh, religiously. You say the raid took place in August 1944. I am not specific about the dates. I noticed that, but you do uh, speak of how you all watched the raid from the steaming confines of the barracks, that sort of thing. So it was August. What is your point? Allied records show no bombing raids until December of that year. Please explain the discrepancy. Discrepancy? We had no calendars in that place. For what? To tell us that tomorrow would come? In that place, the future was a threat. Well, poetic society doesn't say much for the accuracy of your account. <sighs> and I am not a clerk. I saw what I saw. What happened to me happened, and I do not quibble about dates. Okay, then neither will I. Good. <laughs> On page 103, you say that your friend Clivenitz ended up in the gas chamber. How do you corroborate that? I was there. I was there for the selection. I saw him go. I was sent to the right, Clivenitz, to the left of the sick and the dying. And two days later, they came and they took him to the gas. But you didn't actually see him go into the chamber. Of course not. So how do you know, really know, that's where he ended up? If I did, I would be dead, and you know that. Convenient, is it? That's it. That's all the, the time. Stage. Furnace is sending the ashes of our families up to the skies. It was unbearable. There are rubber plants oh, in our switch. Rubber they have a terrible smell. I have had enough of this client of yours. I am not finished. You say this tournament with your best friend, your soulmate in a soulless place, huh? <sighs> You are not worthy to speak that man's name. You say Clevenitz saved your life. He told you to pretend that you were he, that you, not he, were a trained engineer. Clevenitz was sick with dysentery, and he knew he would not survive. So he told the couple that I, not he, was the engineer, so that I could survive to tell our story because he knew that someday some monster like you would come along to deny the So crimes you worked as an engineer repairing roofs, you say? To deny the crimes committed against us so as to commit them again? As a man, sir, a joist! I have no idea. Basic terms! You'd have to know that to convince the Germans uh, you were an engineer. That's it, that's all this stops now! But I trapped him! What? Oh, to think that he could convince the Germans he was an engineer. It's ludicrous. I'm insulting the bombing rates, a thousand other discrepancy. Falsus in partis, falsus in omnis, false in one thing, false in all! Are you calling me a liar? Of course I am! And worse! Propagandist, a profiteer, and a bootlicker to international finance. Oh, who first approached you, sir? Who paid you off? Told you what lies to spread? Oh, we are not fooled by your ridiculous stories anymore. Someday, perhaps not soon, but someday, your great crime against humanity will be exposed, and your kind will at all last be gone. Unborn and. Ah! They told us that we were less than human, and I never thought I could ever think that way about another human being. I will fight you with all the strength left in me. That was new. <laughs> Tell you what. Try to back out of this now, we are going to hold a press conference and we'll tell everybody about this little meeting. Before, I tried to keep you safe 
from this, but now I want you standing up there next to him. Because now you deserve it. Well, what's next, counselor? 